Well, welcome guys, thanks for checking out this video. So we're here yet again with another update to the Rectory Pocket 2. Now, before I go ahead and explain how to do this yourself, and even if it's actually worth doing in the first place, I just want to quickly run through to what updates that we've had so far, just to get a better understanding. So when this originally came out, it kind of had a 6.1 for the Android version. That was a bit sluggish, but it was pretty solid experience. And there were a couple of problems but then there was also later on in production it included a update file so it was easier to actually update and get better firmware onto this system so you may have originally had the 6.1 without the update icon or you would have had the model after with that update so then later after that we would have had a 8.1 version and that was promised quite a while ago and was supposed to release for the august and uh, so a lot of people were testing that but they weren't really too happy it was um really fluid and quite fast experience and it was booting a lot quicker but there were a lot of bugs for that so then later on we actually got another update for 6.1 again so that was a 6.1 version 2 so it kind of took a lot of elements from 8.1 and brought them over to 6.1 but personally I've actually did that video and did that update myself it was still a bit sluggish on installed and programs and a couple more problems and now of the update of 8.1 version 2 if you haven't met before I'm Jay from rightsprite.co.uk and normally I do cover videos on retro games coming to the retro consoles some like new content some accessories and some hacks and tips and if you like that stuff, hit that sub button. So now let's head over to how to actually update your Retro Pocket 2 to Android version 8.1, version 2. Well, once you hit that link in the description box below, you head to this website. So it's got a Google Drive download service. On the left, you got 6.1 version 2. And then on the right folder, you got 8.1 version 2. I also got this readme file section so this is actually helping you if in case you come across any problems for your PC or Mac trying to recognize your device personally I had no problems at all my PC Windows 10 actually recognized my retro pocket 2 as a mobile device straight away connecting it to USB so in this video we're gonna be downloading the actual root version so this will actually wipe your retro pocket 2 this is what I did the last time I just found this as a quicker solution to actually get the update on there so I do recommend again to back up your save files or anything you want to back up and bring back over if you want to try and just update it from your actual version that you got at the moment I do recommend checking out this channel by more Texer. he does give you more information on how to actually do it that way but here we're going to be wiping everything clean and downloading the necessary files to do so also there's some great coverage by a youtuber called spin retro and he does go into more detail of what some problems that he's come across with 8.1 personally i haven't really come across any but i will actually go into more details later on in the video so this is why i'm recommending this update at the moment so these are the files that we need so it's just two folders so we've got the update and then we also got the apps that we want to install later now doing it this way I did find that it was pretty simple and pretty quick to do so. So we're going to open the first folder which is RP2 8.1 version 2 and we're going to head over to SP flash folder and then we want to head to the flash tool. Now this is a tool that you need to actually flash your retro pocket 2 so give this an open and we just want to actually go to the browse on the top right and you will see your access straight to your folder to MTX all in one. Bam, bam, we're in. And then the next choose folder, you want to add your Android scatter. It should automatically put you in the actual right folder, but if not, it's in the image section. And then you just add that. Now, to actually get this access and downloaded to your device, you just want to actually connect it now to your USB and the USB C on the Retro Pocket and then click download. Sometimes you may have to click download first and then connect it, but for me, it was a bit of a trial and error. And then you should see the bars come up and then you're just ready to actually install it. It shouldn't take too long, it took me about 15 minutes and then I had the green tick and then you're all ready to go with your new update. So yes, bear in mind that it will take a while to actually first boot up. Then when you're in, you're good to go. So now that your Retro Pocket 2 is all updated to the new version 8.1 version 2, we want to restore the apps that originally had to access all the emulators and so on and so forth. So now we want to head back to the PC and open the other folder we downloaded the stock app for SD with guide. So all the actual content in that folder you just want to simply drag and drop onto your SD card. Now the method I do prefer to use is using the USB actual dongle so you just put your SD card in there and then hook it up to your PC therefore you get actual faster transfer rates and it should be a lot quicker but it did take a quite a while to actually get this on it took another 15 minutes to get all those apps back on I just left the ROMs because 
I've already done this and I didn't want to replace that so basically it's just dragging all the content that I should have had in the original stock form with the new update. So now the next step is to install all these apps. So once you've booted up your Retroid, you want to head over to the app toolbox. And when you go down, you should be able to find an execute file. Now this just kind of makes a file that you've put on your SD card to boot up and install. So head down to where you've actually placed your file, which is on the root of your SD card. It should be placed at the bottom because it's not placed in a folder. Let me just find it. There it is. So just give it a click. And now it's going to install every application. It did, this again does take a bit of time, about another 10 minutes. So just be a bit patient on that. And then when this is 100% complete, the actual retro package ask if you want to reboot. And then the whole thing re will reboot again now with all the apps restored. So here we have it all booted up. The first thing that you notice now is that your retro does boot up a lot quicker than that of the original 6.1 version. Something I'm really enjoying because we just want to get in there and onto the games. Now something I've been testing with this version because it's definitely more quicker, more responsive is the play, uh, Android Play games. So I've been downloading a couple and there's some that have been pretty awesome. One has been The Adventure of Mana. One game I've been actually after for a while because I don't own a PS Vita and there hasn't really been any handheld device version on this. So when it comes to actual games itself, from Android, you you are only limited to ones that are compatible with Android 8.1. So it's more of a trial and error. And when it comes to actual graphical performances, this is actually a really solid experience. So you just hold down the home button and then you're into game mode and bam, it runs really smooth. There is different experience with different games, but all in all, oh, that's a new move. Sweet. How did I do that? Anyway, so this is, um, when it comes to graphics, I would recommend games that kind of look like DS games or 3DS games. And you always have to check on the Play Store if it's compatible with your device. Now one thing that is a bit annoying, every time you boot up you are into mouse mode. Uh, so you have to try and just get out of that and put it by here. So it's not actually perfect. And if you look at the video by Spin Retro, he does have more information of some compatibility issues with some certain games. Now for me, my experience with this, I did want to try and get everything going with the Retro Act. And if I go to my dig system, I've got everything now set up with RetroArch, so my uh, NES games all work with that because I'm a big fan of the retro achievements. That's just my personal taste. So most of these actual emulators will run with that. There are just a couple that won't really utilize with this Retroid and that is the GBA. I've had a bit of problems with the RetroArch itself. So you have to download a different emulator to do that. And to actually apply different emulators, just go to manage systems and then you've got your different RetroArch emulators. So that is the one I've installed. I do recommend downloading RetroArch via actual Play Store and then dragging it onto your system because if you actually download it from the Play Store itself, there are a few, a few problems. So you wanna to go to the actual recommended site and download it from there. That's what they state. So I downloaded it, installed it, and I run my emulators that way. But again, with the Game Boy Advance, there are some problems. So you have to run it through a different emulator and they are out there and they do run pretty awesome. Now with Dick, I've been using this as a front end and I've try been trying to find a decent theme. This is a card theme that came out quite recently and I must say it's really compatible with Dig itself and I am really enjoying how this looks. Another emulator that does have some problems with RetroArch is the N64. But again, you wanna download another emulator that provides that for the N64 for this and just link it up the same way. Another thing to think of is with your Mega CD games, you wanna try and make sure you got the BIOS in the RetroArch system folder and then that will help actually boot the games. But with every other emulator that I've come across at the moment, you don't need any BIOS files, anything like that. But with the Mega CD games, you do have to make sure you've got that in the correct folder. Now, if you had any problems with installing this on your own, I do recommend checking out a Discord channel called Retroid Handheld. I'll put that in the description box below. But for me, this setup has been pretty awesome for me, but other people has had problems with other features. So the update isn't really perfect, but so much better than we had in its original release. Now let me know guys if you had any problems with your update, if there's anything that you would actually like in any further updates to your Retro Pocket 2. So as always, if you like this video, hit that button. If you want to support, click subscribe, leave your comments below, and I catch you guys on the next video.